Hey, hello, and welcome once again to my channel. This reflex image, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to do a very, very simple man manipulation, and also it's going to look realistic enough for you guys not to tell the difference if the picture is actually taken there or I actually did the manipulation. So, at uh, this time of the year, when in my school, we always do what we call back to school. It's a trend in our school. We have a departmental day from Monday to Friday, which we choose different dress. Uh, most of most of the Thursday, we use our back to school outfit. So I invited the model over, who has the same outfit, and think of what I can recreate with that. So we took the picture, and here is one of the picture. Here are the rest of the pictures I have over here. So I took the shoots using my Canon 60D, two like setup SK300, sorry, AD200 Pro, and a uh, 3520. Uh, Godot's flash with two beauty dish in conjunction with them So that's how I got these results. So and I did The manipulation to this extent. So I'll be showing you how I did this manipulation and uh, Hope you guys can follow along and I've, re I've already removed the background. I've cleaned the background. Here's the layers here So if you want to know how I do that, how I remove my background perfectly there's a video there are videos on my channel that you can actually learn from from a to z it's very very easy to do and straightforward if you know how to use your polygonal axle tool your quick selection tool and also your pen tool so you should have a perfect selection from the beginning so here's all the layer layers i've created here's my model without the background and here is the background where I remove the blemishes and stuff like that. So here's the initial background. As you can see there's not enough space in the background for who to create what we need from. So that's why I did the background extension to this extent. If you want to know how I do all that, there are also videos. Just check the link in my description. You can actually see a video there that will teach you how to do that. So the way I did this manipulation, you see, is a back to school concept. So I have to bring in a manipulation file that will go in conjunction with what I'm trying to uh, tell in this particular picture what I want what I want the picture to be like we're talking about school we're talking about uniform so the only thing that can go in my collection with that is my library so I have a, I have a bookshelf over here I have a bookshelf I have at least three different bookshelf but the one that goes with what I want uh, let me look for it so this is the particular one I use in the video so this goes with what I need. So once you see the back to school and you see this library, you, you, it's, it, it's, it's very, very realistic enough. You might not be able to tell the difference if I manipulated the picture or not. So it's already telling the story of the picture, even though I don't see anything there. So firstly, I'll be dragging this into my Photoshop. I'll drag into my Photoshop. I'll wait for it to load up. Then I'll increase the size. I'll bring it to the location I want it to be. So, so whatever size I want, then I'll click on my OK. But the issue I'm having right now is that it's already covering my model and it's supposed to be at the back. So what I'll be doing is I'll be dragging it below my model layer. From here, I'll have to drag it down below a layer as you can see right now. So I'll adjust it to wherever location I want it to be. Let me say I want it to be around this way. So once I'm done with dragging it into Photoshop, the next thing I'll be doing is I'll create a shadow below it. It seems as if we, we imported it right now, which is not looking all realistic. There's no shadow there. So it seems as if it's standing on air, and that's not what we want it to be. We want it to look very, very real. As if the library, the bookshelf are already there where we take the picture, when we took the picture. So I'll be showing you how to do that. Firstly, you have to create an empty new layer below your bookshelf. So create the empty new layer, drag it below the bookshelf, then pick your polygonal axle to draw a straight line following the shelf's shape draw the straight line this way as you can see join it together then right click on it right click on it then go to your fill under fill click on the color then fill with complete black then you click on your ok so as you can see automatically we've created a shadow but we need to blow out the shadow a little bit to make it look very very real so you can actually use your blur, but the one I love using the most, the one I love using the most is my my feather. 
I love feathering it. So what I'll just do right now is since the selection is already there, I just have to click on my max. I'll click on the max right there. So I'll just pick the property. Here's my property here. If you don't have your property here, just go to your window, under window, search for it. So here's the properties over here. So once you click on it, it's going to load up in your panels over here. So here's my property over here. So I'll just have to increase the feather until I see fit. As you can see, it's giving me a blurry edge in the picture. As you can see. As you can see, it's fading off for me. And also, the bookshelf is too bright for my liking. So I can just decide to reduce the brightness by clicking on it then clicking on ctrl m bringing the brightness down as you can see drag it down until you like the color that it's showing you so once you're done with that just click on your ok so we've already placed uh the bookshelf we talked about so the next thing is for me to apply the reflection i used here this reflection the reflection of our leg so i'm going to be using that reflection in this video also so how am I going to do that? I'll click on my model. Here's my model layer over here. I will duplicate it once again by clicking on Ctrl J. Then the layer below, I'm going to convert it to smart object. Click on the layer below, right click on it, then convert to smart object. Then wait for it to load up. After that, I'll still right click on it again. Click on edit content. It will take me to a entire new document where I can work on this particular picture alone without affecting the rest of the documents. I'm working on so far so once it loads up like this i just have to go to my image i'm going to click on rotation then click on flip canva vertical then i wait for it to load up as you can see right now it's going to turn it upside down for us so once i click on ctrl s it's going to reflect on the entire document i'm working on which is the layer this uh, document i have here. so once i click on it as you can see right now it's already there so all i just need to do now is just to transform it by clicking on ctrl plus t then I'll bring it to the location I want it to be. I'll bring it to the location I want it to be. Then I adjust it to whatever area I want it to be. Let me say I want it to be this way. Once I'm done with that, I just have to click on my OK. I have to click on my OK. So the next thing I'll be doing right now is just to reduce the opacity. As you can see, then we already have automatically have a mirror reflection over here. It's as simple as that. You can actually do the same mirror reflection here also in this bookshelf by clicking on Ctrl J. The layer below, rasterizing it, right click, then click on rasterize, sorry, convert to smart object, wait for it to load up, then right click on it again, click on edit content. So it's going to also bring it to another entire document. Then you go to your image, under image, go to rotation, then flip Canva Vertica. As you can see right now then click on ctrl s it's still going to reflect here also as you can see it's going to reflect here then ctrl t to transform then drag the location whatever location you want it to be as you can see right now drag it to whatever location you want it to be then click on your ok repeat the same step you do on this one by reducing the opacity as you can see right now reducing the opacity so it's looking all that real right now so the last thing is for me to bring in my cutting as you already know the cutting is like my own signature i use it in almost everything i do all my picture manipulation and stuff so i use the cutting there so once you see the cutting in my picture you and even though my logo is not there you can tell that i'm the one that did the job myself not someone else so i'll just go back to my file manager again i'll click on it then drag the cutting in so I wait for it to load up, then I'll adjust it, I'll adjust it to whatever location I want it to be. Once I'm done with the selection, I just have to click on my OK. As you can see, we're done with our manipulation. The next step is for we to color grade. Before I jump, jump into that, if you're interested in getting any of my pack, the overlay pack, the premium overlays, the PNG file, the flying fabric and so on. Even my color grading lots, they are available for sale and they are very very affordable. Uh, there's a link in my description so you can actually go through the link and make a purchase there. You can also contact me on my WhatsApp or Instagram if you want to make payment directly to my account then I'll forward the file to you there. So now let's jump into our color grading aspects. For you to do any other thing now, we have to click on the uppermost layer which is our model layer that we have over here. Click on it. 
Firstly, I want to add a little bit of vintage to my picture. For me to do that, I'm going to click on my Eclipse Macro tool over here. Click on it. Then I'll hold down my shift key. Then I'll draw a circle around that. I will adjust it to whatever location I want it to be. After I'm done with that, then I'll click on Ctrl Shift and I to invert my selection. After that, I'll go to my adjustment layer. Click on my solid color. Wait for it to load up. Then I'll fill it with black color. Then click on my OK. As after that, I will also have to click on the max over here. I'll click on the max. Then I'll increase the feather to about 600 or so. 621. Then I'll click on my enter. I'll wait for it to load up. Then after, I, after that, I'll just have to reduce the opacity. I'll bring it down to about 30 is okay for me. So now, now let's turn it over and turn it on back. Let's see the effect. Here's the before of the vintage and here is the after. So it darkens the edges of the picture for us as if the light is being controlled while we took the picture. So the next step is for me to use my premium color grading lots, which I use for almost all my manipulation. Very, very easy to use. Just a single click and you're done with color grading. So I'll just go back to my adjustment layer. I'll click on my color lookup, click on load 3D lots. I'll have to scroll down and um, click on my Mela chocolate. Boom. Automatically, it's going to create a low light image for us and we're done with the job. You can decide to add a skin lot also to your picture. Still go back to your adjustment layer. Click on your color lookup. Still click on load 3D lots. This time around, pick the natural color. Uh, we reduce it. I'm going to reduce it. The color is a little bit too much. Just come to the opacity. I'll bring it down. Say about 43 is okay by me. As you can see right now, we've actually done a very, very simple manipulation. I can do this in 10 15 minutes after removing my background, which is very, very easy and straightforward to do. So that's all for today's tutorial, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And also turn on the notification icon if you have any question you can contact me and i'll get back to you as soon as possible see you guys on my next tutorial my love